everybody, Dojo Sniper Wolf once again bringing it to you live from the crib. Now, a couple people have asked me to sort of give an explanation of how frame beta works in Mortal Kombat X, and while I'm pretty sure that some have covered it already in the comment section, some people do prefer video learning because they can actually see what's being applied, and it's a little easier than reading a giant wall of numbers and text and whatnot, so. I'm going to do this as best as I can, having just rolled out of bed, quite literally, and I'm still drinking my first cup of coffee. Okay, let's get started. So the first character we're going to look at is Kotal Kahn in the Sun God variation, because one of the more common practices I see online or from lesser skilled players is to use his down one, which is a poke, into Sun God choke as kind of like a tick set up. So, let's take a look at Kotal Kahn's frame data. So Kotal Kahn, his down one begins in six frames, which is pretty fast, is plus 14 on hit, and is minus five on block. So being plus 14, that means if down one actually hits your opponent, then you can subtract 14 frames from whatever move he does next, because he's extremely plus. So Sun God Choke, begins in 14 frames. So 14 minus 14, zero, which is about as good as a transition as you're gonna get in a fighting game. On your knees. All right, so let's take a look at that setup and see what happens if we try to hit buttons on pokes because we all like to hit buttons. On your no, knees. I couldn't use standing one. Well, on down one didn't work. I can't uppercut. Darn it. I love to uppercut. Um, and I couldn't use soul burst. Knees. Okay. So we've established that on hit, offline at least, you're not going to counter poke that setup because he's at advantage. So is there anything you can do to get out of it? Let's take a look. You can backdash. You can neutral jump. Jump forward, jump backwards. Backdashes do have limited invincibility, so you can use them to get out of situations like that. Now you have to be on top of it and know that he's going to do it, otherwise you'll slip and then you'll get choked. So let's take a look at that same setup on block and see if it's just as effective. So we'll set Ermac to block the down one. On your knees. All right, so block. So if you sit and block, then obviously you're gonna get choked. But let's try to press buttons now, cause I really like to press buttons. Hmm. Uh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. All right, so what changed in that setup? Well, let's take a look at the frame data again. Down one, still plus 14, but like we said, it's minus five on block. So if somebody blocks a down one, then rather than reducing frames from your next move, you have to add frames to your next move. So minus five starts up in 14. 14 plus five, 19. So sun, that setup, Sun God Choke won't come out for 19 frames. So let's take a look at Ermax frame data. So the first punish I used was standing two, which begins in nine frames. The second punish I did successfully was forward four, which begins in, I wanna say 12 frames? 12 frames. After that was lift, 13 frames. And then finally x-ray, which begins in 13 frames as well. So. Obviously, if you look at the numbers, Sun God Choke comes out in 19 frames, and I'm pushing a, a 9-frame punish, a 12-frame punish, and a 13-frame punish. So anything that I do is going to beat that setup. Now, something to keep in mind when looking at frame data is that off of block strings and whatnot, 
If you use a special move, in this case being lift or soul ball or soul burst or teleport, etc., then you can take the startup frames as they appear in terms of punishing somebody. So 25 frames. But if you use a normal or a string to punish off of block, there is a transitional period of one frame which basically means if you use a poke or a string, there's a one frame added to your startup. So in this case, my standing two, which normally comes out in nine frames, now comes out in 10 frames. My forward four, the overhead, comes out in 13 frames instead of 12. So that's how that works. All right, now that we've given a little bit of an explanation on that instance, let's take a look at another set of characters. Welcome back everybody. This is going to be a quick part two. I have to leave for work soon. So, somebody asked me, how, how do you punish Ermac's strings? It seems like every time he does something and I try to poke, I always get hit. So, I decided to pick up that person's character. What, what the hell is that? Who, anyway, so I decided to pick up this person's character and take a look and see what exactly his character can do to punish Ermac. Now, I am not a Kenshi main by any means, so don't expect these to be the most optimal or damaging or even flashy. This is just what I could come up with off the top of my head in the five minutes I spent looking at his move list. So, basically, Kenshi's fastest poke is his down one, which begins in eight frames, which is pretty good. I mean... Not terrible, I guess. It's minus four on block, so not many characters, if any, can really punish it directly on block. And it's plus 16 on hit, which is really good. So, Ermac, we'll take a look at his frame beta real quick. His down one is six frame startup, plus 10 on hit, and minus 10 on block. So it's very advantageous, but it's also very bad if he decides to push buttons on block, as we demonstrated with the Kotal Khan video. His down three, eight frame startup, minus six, plus 15, very nice. As far as his strings, the go-to Ermac strings in any combo are really gonna be standing two, as we demonstrated, nine frame startup, and he can cancel it into any special movie once, as well as, if I can find it here, forward two, one, down two which is his launch string, Certain Death, and fitting name because that can lead to a lot of damage. Starts up in 16 frames, but it's only zero on block. So let's first take a look at Ermac's pokes. Now the online thing to do is to mash pokes during block strings. So let's give that a whirl. Okay. get a little closer so because Kenshi is kind of a slower character up close there's really not a lot he's gonna do to punish Ermax down one directly on block if you're quick and expecting it then you can counter poke Ermax down one with your down one but because of the transition frames like we mentioned in the first part of the video an eight frame down one going up against the move that's minus 10 is going to be a very tight window so you can go for it i mean you can even just you know grab that'd probably be the better be better punish just because of the frames but let's take a look at mashing down one during block strings so we'll set Kenshi to block and we will do some mashing here. Okay. Yep, got to have him block. Stands. Okay. Alright. So what can Kenshi do if Ermac decides to push buttons at pokes that are negative? Let's keep in mind that because Ermac's down one is minus ten on block and it has a six frame startup. If he decides to hit down one after the first one's blocked, it doesn't come out for 16 frames. So what can Kenshi do with that? OK. 
Okay, just standard launch. And boom. Ermac decided to push buttons. He's now at full screen and he ate a little bit of damage. And then he gets to go back into that little blender of TK nonsense. <clears throat> anyway, let's take a look at Ermac's strings. Now we mentioned that his standard string, forward two, down one two, is zero on block. So a lot of Ermac players just fish with that to set up frame traps for down one. Because as we saw, his down one, while it's negative, also has a lot of advantage frames on hit. So... I got counter poked. Can't even jump. So, as a Kenji player, does this mean you are stuck if Ermac just does forward two, one down two, and there's nothing you can do about it? Wrong. There is something you can do about it. And I'm surprised more people don't look into this sort of thing, but we're going to set Ermac to do forward two, one down two on block. Okay. Now what can you do as a Kenshi player? No. 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 What can you do? Boom. Ermac got reckless, did forward two down two, er, forward two one down two. You can armor between the second and third hits. Some characters can, not every character. So let's see what else Kenshi can do. I haven't really looked at his move list that long, so. <laughs> TK slice, what is that? Nope, too slow, okay. But can he, nope, can't x-ray, all right, so. He can do Rising Karma, which is good enough. You know, launches, you can push him away again and go back into your TK zoning. Now, as far as Ermac's other strings, primarily he will do something along the lines of, I don't know. Two, 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 which is minus nine. So, really not a lot Kenshi's going to do about that. You can't really armor through it either. If you know he's going to do it, you can just duck and then counter poke him because the first hit is a high. But you have to be quick. See? Uh, so, not much you're going to do about that. I mean, he's minus nine, so he has to respect your mix-up, which you should take full advantage of, you know, just like that. But uh, what else does Ermac do? Oh, the forward four, Ermac's lovely overhead. On its own, it's minus 20. I don't think I need to explain how to punish a move that's minus 20 on block. Uh, the safest answer he's going to have is forward 4-3, forward which is minus 11. No. So, while Kenshi can't really punish a lot of Ermac's moves directly on block, what you as a player have to do is take advantage of the fact that that person is at negative frames, and they have to respect your mix-up if they don't burn meter on armor. So, if we know... Ermac is minus 11 after that particular string, then what you have to do is go through your move list and find moves that start up in 11 frames or less, or run cancel, and go for a mix-up. Or you can choose to retreat, you know, your choice. So, that's kind of just a general breakdown of how frames work in this game. I know it's not the most detailed, but I'm a little pressed for time. Be available to answer any questions, just hit me up. This is Sniper Wolf, and I'm out.